Priscilla. Um, this was doing 35 mil pre uh, previews from the 26th and now in cinema. So new film by Sophie Coppola, who is the director behind Virgin Suicides, Marie Antoinette, and much more. This is based on the memoir Elvis and Me by Priscilla Presley, who is also gets an executive producer credit. And it follows the strange and often disturbing relationship between Priscilla, who was, I think, 14, 15 years old when she first met the superstar that was uh, Elvis Presley, took a shine to her through one of the, the you know, the so-called Memphis Mafia, who was sent to invite her. Have a look at the clip. Terry West, what's your name? Priscilla Bollier. I see you coming here a lot. Is your family stationed here? Yes. Where are you from? Texas. My dad just transferred here in August. That's so. Well, how do you like Germany? Mm. Well, I booked the entertainment here. My wife plays here sometimes. Neat. Do you like Elvis Presley? Of course. Who doesn't? Well, I'm a friend of his. My wife and I go to his house sometimes when he has people over. He's always glad to see folks from back home. Uh, we're going this weekend if you want to join. I have to ask my parents. Well, all right. See you around. So that's rising star Katie Spaney, who won a Volpe Cup for Best Actress when the film premiered at Venice. Won a what? Volpe. V-O-L-P-I. It's just the name of the particular award. Okay. And then... Jacob Elordi, who, of course, you will remember from uh, Saltburn. You know, the, the main guy in Saltburn? Yes. Who's, well, the main guy who isn't Barry Keoghan. Yes. Barry Keoghan. Um, he's uh, Elvis, which is a kind of near impossible task to play Elvis in the wake of the performance by Austin Butler. In, who was so fantastic. Who was so fantastic in, in, in Baz Luhrmann's movie. But actually, I think Jacob Elordi does a pretty good job. So the thing is... Unlike the Baz Luhrmann uh, biopic, firstly, this doesn't feature Elvis music. This has got things like, um, well, there's some anachronistic stuff. So there's the Ramones cover of Baby I Love You. There's music from the French rock band Phoenix. Um, Copeland's been married to Thomas Mars since 2011. And then stuff from Sons of Raphael. And the air of the film is, I mean, you know the story of Priscilla and Elvis. Do you know the story? Uh, you know, roughly, I suppose. Okay, so he met her when she was still at school, and she then moved into Graceland um, in a platonic sense that she was, you know, sh chaperone. Now you did, air, you did, I did, you know, air, in, in as yes. Yeah, so she she moved into she was basically she became the guardian. She was guardian at Graceland, and then she ended up marrying Elvis. But of course, they their relationship was non physical. For a, you know, until is, that, is that actually true? It is actually true. Yes, and in fact, this is you know, she she if you if you read Priscilla's account of it, this is very very close to it. There is a there's a strange thing which is almost like a kind of gothic melodrama that she's moved into Graceland, um, in which it's almost like she is preparing to become Elvis's bride. Elvis, meanwhile, is I mean, there's a touch. You may, you've seen the Hitchcock Rebecca. Is that weird? That really weird thing about going, you know, like moving into a house in which the, you're 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 kind of a fish out of water, and very very young, and the strangeness of this life in which she goes to school by day, she comes back, she's Elvis's girlfriend, but Elvis is out in the world, you know, having making headlines because of all these girls that he's being seen with. So out in the world, he's behaving like a kind of pop star. And back at home, he's behaving like a Southern gentleman. So it's a really, really strange thing. And I mean, it, it is strange. And the, what the movie does, what the movie does in a very kind of non-judgmental way is flag up the weirdness of the situation that Priscilla Bolio and then uh, you know, later Presley found herself in. And I think that what's really interesting about it is that Coppola sort of finds a finds a way of telling that story without being in any way sensationalist, without being in any way um, overtly judgmental, but allowing the audience to see this kind of I mean it, it is it's like a twisted fairy tale. 
you're one of these people who everyone loves Elvis. And we said, you like everyone loves Elvis. People are screaming about the idea of Elvis. And then this idea that you go to school and everyone loves Elvis. Then you go back to Graceland and you are Elvis's chosen one. But Elvis is off around the world being Elvis. And then there's this kind of really weird thing that sh as she grows up and she then, you know, marries Elvis and um, they have a child and he sort of becomes, he kind of, if anything, he regresses. I mean, the story of Elvis is that the more famous he became, the more he kind of regressed into the surroundings of those around him. I mean, of course, in, in, uh, in Elvis, the Baz Luhrmann film, it's really about him kind of sinking into the clutches of, of Colonel Tom. And Priscilla has always had this, she, I mean, she's been the kind of the keeper of the flame. She's the person who kind of, you know, managed the Elvis estate to what it is. And she's a, she's a, a formidable character. And I think that this does a very good job of telling her story in a way that there's no, I mean, there's just no getting around the weirdness of it. I mean, it is really, really weird and peculiar. I mean, again, you look at the story of Jerry Lee Lewis, um, which is even more weird and disturbing. And I know everyone says, okay, well, different times, different places, and there the, the are different stories. But essentially, it is a story about a young girl being plucked from one world, put into another world in which, you know, she's on the one hand, you know, cared for and looked after, but, there, but there's, there's something very, very strange going on. And then as she sort of grows into herself, the world around her doesn't grow with it. It's kind of, it's melancholy. It's sometimes it's, it's kind of sweet. It's very, it's got a very delicate touch. The film's got a very, very delicate touch. And it, it does a really impressive job of allowing the audience to, to make their own judgments about just how strange this is. And it, it, it is, there is no getting around the fact that there is, there is a sort of sense of gothic melodrama that it is there is a Rebecca thing going on there is a there it's you know like a Disney princess suddenly transported into the lair of you know you think of Beauty and the Beast or something like that and you have to keep reminding yourself no this is true this story is true and you know Elvis and Priscilla were together for a very long time and then and then they weren't um and she has always been considered by I mean you know Elvis fans hold her in great reverence because she was the person who sort of you know, took on the mantle of all that stuff. But it's, it is, it's a, I thought it was, I, th I think it's a very fine film. I think the performances are terrific. I think it really captures the period well. And I think that what Jacob Elordi does is keeps it on the back foot. So you're not getting that thing. When Austin Butler is on in, in Elvis, every single scene, he's lighting up the, the screen. You remember the scene when he plays at the Louisiana mm. Hayride and it suddenly goes all Jimi Hendrix and you're, you know, you can't keep your eyes off him. Well, in this, you can. And it's, it's a quite a clever thing to do a, a, a performance of Elvis in which you are not the most interesting person in the frame. The most interesting person in the frame is Priscilla, who doesn't say very much, who quite often is being pushed to the sides of the drama by this, this whole kind of machinery of stuff which is going on around Elvis and the family and Graceland and the success. And there is something really clever about making a film in which a sidelined character, who his narrative is quite genuinely sidelined, is, is the center of the story. And the more I think about it, the more I think that Sophia Coppola has done a very, very good job of telling this very complicated and often very, very disturbing story in a way that is just okay, this, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then trusting the audience to find their own way through the emotional and philosophical and moral minefield of what's playing out. So big thumbs up then. Yeah, mm. I liked it. I mean, I, 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 I liked it very much. And I was surprised because it's, um, it's, there's something, there is something so artful about making an apparently sidelined character the center of the drama without giving them big speeches it's not to do with big it's to do with well it's to do with it's to do with with what you don't say rather than what you do say thanks very much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it while you're here check out all the other videos because they're cool too aren't they yeah and if you want to keep up to date with everything kermit and mayo's take then check out our social channels 
I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. But I have done. Excellent. 